We need to have, and here's the second half of the talk, civic action, right? Uh, because, you know, this is a thing where we've got to create sort of the policy environment where all this stuff can unfold. And what's interesting also about this moment is that the action can really not be so much at a Washington. It's really much more important about what's happening in your city, what's happening in your state, what's happening with your electric utility. And we've got to do three things. We've got to smooth the path for the energy transition, deal with the resistance that's going to arise. Um, that's state and local action. There's still a hundred other things we've got to do to address the climate crisis, and, and we'll talk briefly about that. Um, and then we got to ensure justice again, because this is going to be, if it happens fast, it's going to be disruptive, and we got to make sure that the green jobs are jobs for all, um, that everybody's got access to power, that the transport doesn't leave some people behind. Um, so let's talk about those. This is a list of states, I think a year ago, that had commitments to 100% clean uh, uh, energy by 2045, 2050. These are critical. We have one in New York. Um, it sort of guides the policy sort of framework everywhere. Um, and it allows for smart things to happen. So I mentioned California. Why are they getting power so cheap? Well, it's because they passed a law that said that every new house has got to have solar panels. Got to have wires, got to have pipes, got to have panels. That immediately cuts out half the cost of installing solar panels. No more marketing, no more permitting. It really becomes just this in enormous industrial process, lots of economies of scale, of installing solar panels. And that's why California households are going to benefit. It's going to be a great deal for California consumers. You know, the extra cost is going to be way offset by the savings they're going to have on electricity. But it's not just blue states. So in Idaho, uh, you've got uh, electric utility, Idaho Power, that's made its own commitment to um, uh, clean, 100% clean power by 2045, I believe. Because I get it. You know, they put out bids for power and they get solar coming in at two cents a kilowatt hour, just crushing fossil fuels. And they know this is best for their customers and this is the direction they want to go. So, you know, different, you know, politics can lead to the same kind of outcomes, you know, for different reasons. Okay, got to do other stuff to address climate change. Um, Drawdown is a great website resource for this. Uh, they talk about the hundred other things you can do. And what's also interesting about the moment we live in is that no matter where you work or where you're a student, um, there's, you can do what you're doing much better, much more effectively, and by re and reducing substantially global warming pollution, um, there's, there's ways to get that done. Um, and, and, you know, if you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, my, on the electricity side, things like micro hydro, Farming, you know, food waste, regenerative agriculture, uh, biochar, um, solutions around buildings, energy efficiency, lighting, retrofits, uh, green roofs, uh, uh, family planning in the context of educating women and girls. There's just so many things that can be done to uh, tackle the problem that are outside of kind of the energy sphere that I'm talking about. And you have to do that, right? So whatever your workplace is, wherever you're a student, you just got to drive those changes. That's got to be part of what we do. Um, and then I've, we, uh, we talked about six of these because we think they're the ones that are, have market uh, sort of drivers behind them, but those other hundred are, are important. And then finally, the civic action piece. So again, if you start getting just rich people putting in solar and batteries, not going to be okay because that's going to leave strand poor people. We've got to make sure that the grid power is still affordable and reliable for everybody as we go through this transition. Uh, got to make sure if we have driverless cars that those things are serving low-income communities and could be great for low-income communities. Provide them with access to transportation they've never had before. Uh, the green jobs have got to be accessible to all rural communities, you know, communities that are hard hit by the transition. Um, and then, how do you do that? There's actually a very simple recipe, which is that if you're engaged with, you know, your utility or lobbying your, your state senator or, or your city council member, look around the room and make sure that the communities that are being impacted by what you're asking for are there too. You know, that's the thing. We've got to make sure that the frontline communities are in, in those conversations early, participating and making sure that, you know, as the changes happen, uh, those folks are, are, are everybody's benefiting from this transition. Mm -hmm.